Hello, this is Marcus Giuliano from Aroma Time Bistro. I'm a chef on a mission, and this video is to highlight our seafood program here at Aroma Time. Um, I have to warn you, this video is not for you if you want cheap seafood. If you want cheap seafood, you've got to go to a cheap restaurant. We do not serve cheap seafood. You don't hear many restaurant owners say, don't visit my restaurant. Um, don't visit my restaurant if you're into cheap food. I'm, I'm passionate about the food we bring to the table here, and I endorse the food. I'm, I'm very involved. Uh, I'm an activist, and I've been involved in seafood um, sustainability since 1998, 1999. It's uh, 12 years ago, uh, 13 years ago, and I was one of the first sh uh, chefs to really um, go gung-ho with this. There were chefs before me and in my time, but now everybody's talking about this. So here's some of the things that we do in our seafood program here that makes our seafood a bit more expensive than most restaurants. You will not find any CO2 gassed seafood in a restaurant. A lot of seafood is gassed, so it looks better. Okay, They gas it, it gets a nice shine on it, um, it looks better. Uh, now the CO2 gas, that this is predominant in a lot of different seafood, I've got to tell you. Sushi restaurants, how do you think that tuna looks so nice and bright? Gassed. Okay, our tuna here is not gassed. What gassing does, besides make it look bright, is it extends the shelf life or it makes it appear to be fresher than it is. Because you're basically, you know, it's like taking an old tire and armor alling an old tire. It's going to look bright and look good until you realize, gee, i got to drive with this tire, then it's a different story, okay? That's what that does. Catch methods are extremely important. The way you catch seafood, I can't show this enough. I interviewed last summer a professional, uh, ex-professional or ex-fisherman uh, who was on commercial boats. Um, there's several different ways to catch fish. We prefer fish that's hand line caught. One hook, one line, one fish, bring it up, put it in the dock, process it. Hands down, that's what we're after. Some are netted, gill netted, or they drop a net and the fish go into the net. Certain fish are more sustain are sustainable like that, so others aren't because they're catching bycatch. Others, they drop nets with rakes on the bottom and rake the bottom of the ocean floor. Okay, so they rake the bottom and tumble everything, like shrimp is one of those things uh, that they really they do that with, and it, it destroys uh, the habitat of, of what's happening on the bottom of the ocean. Um, and plus lots of bycatch in that, because they're just getting everything randomly. When you have one hook, one line, you're targeting a species more direct. Now, this ex-fisherman that I had in here last summer told me a horrific story. They were out fishing mahi-mahi, and they were long line fishing it. Long line is where you string out several hundred feet, a thousand feet of, of line, throw on lots and lots of hooks, bait them, let them sit there, and pull this boat and have the long lines out there, and the fish will just keep biting and catching, and you get fish. When the long line comes up, actually it was swordfish, he, was, he told me this story about they were fishing swordfish. And he goes, you never know if you're going to get all swordfish or all sharks or what's going to come up on these lines. Around, uh, around the equatorial zones where mahi-mahi is prevalent, you're going to get a lot of sea turtles on those lines. So up to 50% of the catch is actually sea turtles. So you take mahi-mahi, which is a very sustainable, fast-growing fish, and now throw 50% sea turtles in the equation. It's just, it's not sustainable. Back to the fishing store. So he goes, Marcus, when we would get these, the get when we would reel these in and get them up on, he goes, y if you're on the wrong side of the current, you might get all sharks, and you have 200 hooks, and it's all sharks. He goes, guess what we did to save the lousy dollar on the hook? He goes, we would take and cut the shark off, not not snip it, because you know the shark can regenerate, and that that hook would 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 would, would um, disintegrate. He goes, no, to save the lousy dollar a hook, we'd cut the shark, the, the jaw right out of the shark and throw the shark back in the water, just let it sit there and die, because it, it, can't, it can't live at that point. And this is what happened time after time. If they got mahi, then it was a score. They'd have, or, or swordfish, and they'd have all swordfish. He goes, but if you're on one room wrong side of the current, it's not one shark, the whole thing is sharks. And I, I was shocked when I heard this. I knew the horses, but I never actually sat in this office and interviewed somebody that actually had been in that situation. And it was it was eye opening for me, even though I, I've known this stuff and I've known that the powers are, or the dangers of this. Um, the next thing is population. Is the population of the fish strong enough to us be catching more and more of that fish? Is the, are the stocks monitored? Um, the, you know, it's, you can't you can't keep fishing something and expect for them to keep reappearing if you're catching fish that are too young. Um, or, or the wrong sex of the fish if you're catching. So these are all important. Um, so you have the catch methods important, the um, population, and then of course, is it coming from clean water? 
Are you fishing? Are you getting fish that's coming from a non-contaminated source of water? Nowadays, what isn't contaminated? I mean, they're finding contaminants all over. So you're being forced to go out further and further in the ocean to fish or further up. You know, it's just it's what's happening. So that's another very important thing. You wouldn't go to the Hudson River and say, oh, I just caught this fish. You know, people still fish shad and bass out of there. Um, you can't commercially sell bass. Um, and they say shad, when shad swims up, it stops eating, so it's not absorbing the toxins. Uh, it, it's in the water. I, I, don't, I don't buy it. Um, so those are very, very important issues when it's coming to seafood. Here at Aroma Time, we actually try to pick uh, seafood that comes off the Monterey Bay Aquarium's top seafood watch, uh, seafood watch top choices, which all that stuff is analyzed. And there's a, another uh, agency out there called a Marine Stewardship Council, MSC. Now, we're not certified by them and we don't claim to be certified, but when we go to buy seafood, I can see if that species is actually certified. And sometimes they will certify something that's net caught because the, everything's monitored and they're not doing bycatches or they're not trawling on the bottom of the ocean. It's a midwater trawl or something. So it's, they've really done all the research and they've approved certain species. Now, is everything perfect? That the that these the, these uh, regula regulatory agencies do or these outside sources no, but it's a great start. It's a phenomenal start, and that's where we really hit home and try to do. Um, besides all of that, one of our vendors uses an outside source called Seafood Safe. It's an outside agency that tests all the seafood for mercury, PCBs, dioxins, all the top contaminants, and that fish company won't even sell seafood if it com comes in contaminated. So that's just an additional step that our seafood vendor takes, one of our seafood vendors. And I gotta tell you, his seafood costs more than anybody else, and I'm happy to pay for it. I'm sure you'll be happy to. Did you know our tuna right now is one of the lowest mercury tunas on the market? I have the results, laboratory results, that I can pull up online and show you. The stuff is tested. It's hand-line caught, small albacore tunas, old enough to reproduce. I, that's a whole other blog, the albacore tuna we do here, which I'll get to and the shrimp that I get to. But this is just an overview of some of the steps that actually go into our seafood selection here and why our seafood costs more. I mean, if I'm buying mahi-mahi, my mahi-mahi is going to be $4.00. Uh, three to four dollars more a pound than other people's mahi mahi. Not everybody, most people's mahi mahi. And you know, it's just because of the way it's caught. It's the logistics of one person, one hook, one line, or a big rig throwing out thousands of hooks and reeling it in all day. The economics are much different. The impact on the environment is much different. Um, and the impact on the price, unfortunately, is a little bit different. So, um, this is really to justify why we do what we do here and why we charge the prices. If you're in the cheap seafood, like I said, we're not about cheap seafood. Um, we're really about serving pure, clean, sustainable uh, seafood that's, that's extremely fresh. A word on frozen. Frozen seafood is actually better than fresh in a lot of cases because when they catch the seafood, they massage it, back bleed it, flash freeze it. When you defrost it, the frosted has zero microbes. A lot of the top-end seafood that's caught uh, um, in America and plus on the Pacific Northwest, the salmon and everything that's cryogenically frozen and like this, a lot of it's shipped to Japan for their sushi because of the high quality frozen uh, capabilities of this. And it's called frozen at sea or frozen on shore, which means that the fish is frozen as soon as it's caught, not where it's brought back to a dock, sorted, stuck in a warehouse, decided it can't sell, and then they pack it. Um, this stuff is bought, uh, I'm sorry, this stuff is caught with the anticipation of knowing that it's going to be frozen right then and there. That stuff is phenomenal. I love seafood that is frozen at sea or frozen on shore uh, because it's just such a fresher, fresher product. And it helps me um, get a fresher product to you. So not all frozen seafood is bad. So it's really have to weigh a lot of things here when you go to procure seafood. A lot of people ask me, where do I buy good seafood, Marcus? You know what? It's hard to buy good seafood. Grocery stores are very tough because they get the bottom of the barrel. They get the cheap stuff um, that, that, that a restaurant like myself won't take or higher-end restaurants won't take. Um, and they're very price competitive. They know you're going to go from one, from one grocery store to another grocery store because their flounder is 50 cents cheaper or 25 cents cheaper or their salmon's a little cheaper. They know that and they're fighting those price points all the time. However, I'm not fighting a price point. I'm buying something that I believe in, that I have a passion for, that I have a mission for, and I just have to charge accordingly. And this little video will help you understand really what I do here on our seafood procurement. I'm Marcus Giuliano, and I'm a chef on a mission.